Hi everyone. I get asked a lot what tools I use and what I would recommend to someone just starting out in pointed pen or modern calligraphy. And I remember when I was just beginning, it was a lot of trial and error, but over the years I've narrowed what I love down to a very specific set. Um, and I wish somebody had pointed me to these things when I just started, so hopefully by sharing it will be useful for some of you guys. So let's talk about paper. These are a couple of the sketchbooks or blocks that I like using paper out of best. The first is this Rhodia pad. They're pretty widely available, or you can use Clairefontaine as well. The two things that I look for when I'm buying paper is the firstly that it be smooth enough that the ink, uh, that the nib doesn't get snagged into little crevasses and trenches. And the second is that it's robust enough that you don't get bleeding or feathering. And these rhodia plaids are great because they don't have either of those problems. The one on the left is dotted and the one on the right is ruled. The second one I like is this Fabriano sketch pad. The paper is quite thin, um, so it's 60 grams per, per square meter. That's a measure of the, the weight of the paper or how thick it's going to be. And the reason I like it to be thin is so I can take these guide sheets that I have and I can just slip them under the sheet of paper and I can see the slant angle I need to maintain as well as the ascenders and descenders. When I started out, I didn't always use guidelines when I was practicing and that really hampered my progress. So I recommend that you do. Um, if you're going, if you're studying traditional styles like copper plate or Spencerian. The third one I like is these are these Muji notebooks. Uh, the paper is cream colored, which I love. I, I love cream colored paper more than like white or off white paper. Um, the, it's really smooth and they come in a bunch of different sizes. So this is a kind of smaller spiral bound one which lays flat. This one I like better. It's an, an A4 roughly size and the pages come lined. The fourth thing you might be able to do is just find some printer paper that works really well. So I found this one. It's labeled ultra smooth, it's 120 GSM, and I find it works really well. It doesn't bleed or feather, and it's by far the cheapest option out of everything that I've mentioned, uh, since it comes in a huge pack. <laughs> so if you can find printer paper that works for you, that is awesome. For nib holders, I use both a straight holder for flourishing and an oblique holder for general writing, as it helps me keep the angle. This is the Speedball Plastic Straight Holder and it's fine for most purposes. It's really easily available as well. This is the most commonly available oblique holder. It's the Speedball Plastic Oblique, but I really don't recommend it. Um, it's not very adjustable. It's hard to fit larger nibs in there and some nibs just won't fit at all. So instead of getting this, I recommend that you spend a little bit more and get a holder with an adjustable metal flange. You can adjust that to fit any nib with pliers. Nowadays you can find a lot of fancy holders that are made of like fancy woods or carved intricately. That doesn't matter for the quality of your writing so just focus on getting something from a reputable brand. The one on the left is a Speedball Deluxe and the one on the right is a Michael Sol. For inks, my absolute favorite ink of all time is walnut ink. I buy it in crystals. It's used for staining wood, so you can sometimes find it in hardware stores. And it looks something like this. And you mix it with distilled water to create an ink. It's made from the husks of walnuts, and you can actually make it yourself if you happen to have a walnut tree around. But I haven't tried that. My other favorite is Sumi ink. It produces a rich, dark line. Sometimes it needs to be diluted, but it will be waterproof. And also, it's really good for reproduction since it provides like a black line that's easy to scan. For nibs, I really like the following. I like the Zebra or Nico or Tachikawaji. They're all pretty similar. I also really like the Hunt 101. It's very flexible the Blue Pumpkin and the Bra 66 EF. I find these are all pretty beginner friendly nibs as well. And which one you like is gonna depend on how you write and how heavy handed you are. There are two main ways that nibs differ in uh, the size of the hairlines they produce and in their flexibility, so how easy it is to produce those thick swells. Now for some other stuff that I think is gonna be helpful. So, um, yeah, I used to spill ink everywhere all over my workspace on myself. Then I was introduced to Dinky Dips. These are basically small containers that you can use to dip your nib into. 
So I mix my walnut ink in this kind of larger container, but you'll find that with bottles of ink that you buy or ones that you mix yourself, it's not always ideal for dipping your pen into because maybe the opening is too small or you can dip too far. That's where these plastic uh, dinky tips are really handy. You will only dip as far as um, the little hole on the nib and no further. I think it's a really good way to work and I store generally um, uh, walnut ink, sumi ink, iron gel ink, and plain water in my set of four. Don't forget to get a little pipette as well and that will allow you to refill from the larger container really easily. The other bits and bobs are pretty straightforward. A steel ruler to help me rule lines, masking tape to help me fix my work to a surface if I need to, a kneadable eraser which erases without kind of being too harsh on surfaces, and a mechanical pencil to ensure I have the same thickness of ruled line. And now I'm going to show you how I usually set up my surface to work in case you are interested. So I put my dinky dips on the right hand side because I'm a right hander, so somewhere I can easily reach the ink. I always have a paper towel because I actually still do spill ink a lot and it's also useful to clean the nib as we go. Um, our oblique holder with the nib, a jar, a jam jar of just plain clean water to wash the nib in. So I'm going to use some paper out of my Fabriano sketch pad. I always rip the paper out of the pad and I don't use it in the pad because if I use it in the pad then my wrist is kind of elevated from the table surface and I don't find that I can really write very well like that. So I'm going to use a guide sheet as well. And one more thing is that I find it to be too hard to write directly with the table surface underneath these two sheets of paper. So I use a piece of felt, like the kind you can find in a craft or a sewing store. Um, and I put it underneath all those sheets just as like a padding sheet. I find it helps my nib wear out less fast and also provides uh, padding so that I can get kind of finer hairlines. Sometimes I also like to attach my collection of papers to the work surface with some masking tape. And that's it. Now I'm all set to write so I guess I'll get to work. And I'll see you guys in the next video.